Atterberg limits. The Atterberg limits describe a soil's reaction to water content. The Atterberg limits were created by a, the Swedish scientist Albert Atterberg in 1911. The limits can be used to classify and estimate the mechanical properties of a soil. The following tests show methods into determining the water content at the Atterberg limits and works for cohesive soils including clays and silts. The two limits of interest for the following procedures are the plastic limit and the liquid limit. The plastic limit describes the water content at which the soil transitions between a continuously deformable plastic state and a more rigid solid state. The liquid limit describes the water content at which the soil transitions between a plastic state and a flowing state. Procedure Determining the plastic limit of a soil has not changed since the first time these tests were described by Wintermeyer in 1925. This test requires only the soil to be tested, a glass plate, and a tear to hold down the soil sample. First, the mass of the tear must be recorded. Next, to determine the plastic limit, a small handful of fine grain soil is wetted until it is smooth and plastic. This mixture is then rolled on a glass plate using one's palm until the soil is about one eighth of an inch in diameter. The soil is then rolled up into a ball and the process is repeated until the soil begins to crumble before becoming a thread. The soil is then placed in the tear and is massed and dried in an oven of no more than 140 degrees Fahrenheit and then massed again to determine the water content of the soil at the plastic limit. Determining the liquid limit of a soil has not changed since 1925. The test described here was created by Arthur Casagrande. Along with the soil to be tested, this test requires a brass cup apparatus with a crank that lifts the cup one centimeter and drops it repeatedly. This test also requires a grooving tool. First, a tear is masked and recorded. Next, a sample of the soil is wetted until it is about liquid. Next, about a one-third inch sample of the soil is placed into the brass cup. Using the grooving tool, the soil is scored down the middle and be sure to follow the cup's kerf cutting deep into the brass. Next, using the crank, the cup is lifted and dropped at about two drops per second. The groove between the soil should close after 25 to 35 drops. If the groove closes before 25 drops, it is too wet. And if the groove closes after 35 drops, it is too dry. The water content must be changed. Once the groove closes between 25 to 35 drops, the soil is collected into the tear and massed, dried in an oven, and massed again. Finally, the water content is found at the liquid limit. Atterberg Limits, Calculations and Analysis The outputs of these tests are water content and the soil's behavior. These values can be used to find a number of engineering properties such as plastic limit, liquid limit, liquidity index, and plasticity index. These properties describe how the soil will react to the stresses subjected to them. Common Sources of Error The most common source of error for the Atterberg Limit test come from human error. For the plastic limit, pressing too hard while rolling or not adding enough water initially can lead to erroneous results. Using too small of a sample will also, dis also distort the water content calculations, which are vital to this experiment. For the liquid limit test, errors can result from the wide range of drops that define the liquid limit. Ideally, one should get the groove to close to exactly 25 drops, but due to the trial and error nature of this procedure, achieving the correct number of drops is difficult and time consuming. Also, the brass cup must be correctly calibrated for the test having a 1 cm drop. A height that is greater or less than 1 cm could lead to erroneous results. Dragging the grooving tool can also disturb the soil sample and lead to an earlier or late closing.